the geology and geologic history of the McDowell Mountains and the area immediately around them is unique in all the world. It reflects an amazing combination of events that occurred nowhere else and extended over millions, even billions of years. In the following four modules, we're going to explore together this fascinating geologic history. We think of rocks as eternal and unchanging, but actually they're created, can undergo many changes, and eventually are destroyed. Every rock actually carries within it the story of its existence, and this story can be read through careful observation and scientific analysis. When the Earth formed, it was molten, so the first solid rocks formed directly from that molten state, which means they were igneous rocks. Whenever rocks of any kind are exposed at the surface, they're subject to two ubiquitous forces. Erosion breaks large rocks into small ones and those into even smaller ones. The process continues until rocks have been broken down into sediment, ranging in size from sand on a beach to finely ground dirt. Gravity carries sediment to low places where it accumulates over time. When enough sediment accumulates, pressure and other forces cause it to consolidate into sedimentary rock. When rock is exposed to high temperatures and pressures, often deep underground, these conditions can cause chemical and physical changes in the rock. If the temperature and pressure are extreme, the rock may melt into magma. This destroys the rock. If conditions are not so extreme, the rock remains basically intact, but sometimes undergoes significant changes. If this occurs, it has become metamorphic rock, from the Greek words meaning changed form. Rocks can undergo many such changes during their existence. For example, forming as igneous rocks, reaching the surface and eroding into sediment that becomes sedimentary rock, being carried underground and undergoing metamorphic changes, and then being re-exposed at the surface to begin eroding again. What ultimately drives the creation and destruction of rocks and all the changes they may undergo is the intense heat that still remains within the earth, with temperature and pressure increasing down to the core, which is as hot as the surface of the sun. This heat causes much of the earth's interior to be filled with magma, molten rock. The magma is fluid. It can move and flow. But because of the great pressure, it's very thick and moves very slowly. The magma in the upper portion of the Earth's interior, called the mantle, flows in giant circular convection cells that can be thousands of miles across. It may take millions of years for magma to complete a trip around a large cell, but this still works out to an inch or several centimeters every year. The interior of the Earth contains several dozen of these circulating cells, mostly moving in different directions. The circulation of magma in the mantle is just like water circulating in a pot on the stove. The water closer to the flame at the bottom heats and expands which lowers its density and causes it to be more buoyant than the cooler water above it. The heated water rises. Meanwhile, the water closer to the cool room air at the top of the pot cools and contracts, which increases its density and makes it less buoyant than the hotter water below it. The cool water sinks. The rising hotter water from the bottom and the sinking cooler water from the top combine to form a circulating cell, which you actually can see if you look carefully. 
The circulation of the mantle is crucial because the upper layer of the Earth, the thin crust on the surface of which we live, floats on and is attached to the circulating mantle. Since the mantle is moving, the crust above it is dragged along. The Earth's crust mostly is rigid, but because different parts of it are being dragged in different directions by the movement of the mantle cells underneath, the crust is fractured into several dozen tectonic plates separated by boundaries. Most of these boundaries are in the oceans because not only is most of the Earth's surface covered with water, but also the crust under the oceans is relatively thin, just a few miles or kilometers thick in places, and so it fractures more easily than the much thicker crust under the continents. Along the oceanic boundaries, often called oceanic ridges, the thin crust allows magma from the mantle to well up onto the surface, which here happens to be the seafloor. The magma solidifies into new seafloor and expands the tectonic plates lying on either side of the ridge. But if new surface area is being added to the earth on the seafloors, and since the earth as a whole isn't getting any bigger, then surface area has to be subtracted someplace else. This usually happens on the opposite edge of the tectonic plate, far away from the oceanic ridge where the plate is expanding. At these far edges, oceanic plates often are colliding with thicker but lighter continental plates. This ongoing process of plate expansion in one area and collisions elsewhere drives all the geologic processes on the Earth's surface. It causes rock to be created, change, and be destroyed. These collisions cause a variety of effects. The colliding plates may push upward along their boundary, creating huge mountain ranges like the Himalayas. More typically, the oceanic plate is pushed or subducted beneath the continent's edge. Subduction generates enormous heat due to friction, enough heat to melt rock between the two plates into magma, thereby destroying it. The hot, light, corrosive magma works its way up to the surface along the coast, erupting solidifying and therefore creating new rock, and building coastal volcanoes like those that form the Andes and the Cascades. The subduction process also drags existing rocks from the surface near the colliding boundary down underground to where pressure and temperature are higher, thereby changing rock metamorphically. These tectonic processes created and changed most of the rock we see here in the McDowell's and in northern Scottsdale in the vicinity.